Yes, we're back in Microsoft Flight Simulator once again today. Two reasons why we're doing that. First of all, it's raining outside. I don't really want to leave the house. But secondly, our numbers are starting to come down here in Melbourne finally, which is really good news. And it does mean that, fingers crossed, we're waiting for an announcement in two weeks' time that that five kilometre radius around our house that we're not allowed to go further than at the moment, that's hopefully going to go, which means I can get down to the airport. I can start flying and share that with you here on the channel. But I haven't flown for over two months. So what I thought we'd do today is jump into the simulator and practice some emergency scenarios because they're always fun. Isn't that right, Milkshake? Get on with the flying. All right. All right, let's get a home airport then. We'll set Moravin as our departure and we're back in the trusty SR22 again. But what I'm gonna do today is there's this new failures. Well, not new, but I haven't used it on the channel yet. New for me, new for us. And what you can do, well, you can be like most of us were in primary school. You can be a complete failure or you can just fail other things, small things like your oil systems. You can have an oil leak. What I wanna do is a couple of classic engine failures that you'll do if you've done any flight training. And the cool thing about this is we can say we want a complete failure we want to arm it and I want it to come so the first one I want to do is I want to do an engine failure like shortly after takeoff so let's say between one and two minutes I've got real world flying conditions on as usual and like I said it's a horrible day so we have some pretty low instrument meteorological conditions to play with put one stage of flaps in take the park brake off let's go full power we'll start rolling down the runway and we've got airspeed alive on both engines looking good for the moment 60 knots 70 knots so we'll rotate here now climbing out the thing of the series you might think when the engine goes what am i going to do am i going to pull the chute 90 knots i'll get rid of the flaps so until i'm at 600 feet i'm not actually allowed or i'm not supposed to pull the parachute so we're coming out to 400 feet <laughs> i feel a bit nervous actually because i don't know i know it's going to happen but i don't know when it's going to happen 500 feet oh well, this is no good because we're at 600 feet now so at this point i would be pulling the parachute i actually wanted the engine to go sooner than this is the engine going to fail oh it is there we go all right so engine's gone now if i would normally pull the caps parachute at this point but as you can see it's not working so we're going to have to find a place to land so the first thing i do is not put the nose right down uh, you've all been taught different things with an engine failure. I've been taught a really simple thing. Aviate, navigate, then communicate. So aviate, I want to actually fly the aircraft at 88 knots, which is not there. 88 knots is our best glide speed. Secondly, I want to try and get myself to a potential... Ooh, lightning there. I want to get myself to a good landing spot. I'm not going to be able to turn back to the airport. Airport's over there somewhere in the Merck. I'm not going to try and go down on a road I don't think I think my best bet is to go for this beach and I've often thought this about flying out of Moravian is what would I do if I did have an engine failure down here because it is quite heavily populated now I know I'm going to make the beach I'm going to put one stage of flaps out there we go and I may as well put the other one out as well because what we want to do is we want to land with as little forward energy as possible so we'll come down here flare it flare it flare it and set it down on the beach. Beautiful, there you go. And we'll be on the news tonight. Right, I wanna try that again, but this time let me just go to weather and let me go to clear skies. Boink. Perfect, because I wanna try the classic, can you turn back to the airfield? If you have an engine failure after takeoff, oh, park brake would be good. Can you, now I'm not gonna say should you because this is never a question we should really be answering on YouTube, but is it possible in this simulation to take off and turn back to the airfield if you have an engine failure at low level after you've taken off? There we go, a little bit more visibility over the top, that's better. So 390 knots, first stage of flaps go away, coming up through 200 feet, we're just climbing out as normal. Ah, oh, engine failure now. Now, can I turn back and get to the airfield? Well, I wanna make sure again, aviate, so don't pull the nose up, but I want to glide at 88 knots. And at that height, there's no way I'm going to make this. I'm not going to be able to come back. I'm going to go into this building here. No way that would have been survivable. And you can see how little time you have as well. See, what were we there? So about 300 feet. No way you have enough time to get back to the airport. Let's try that again, see if we can get a little bit more height. It's one big reason why I do love the Sirius in real life, because the climb rate on this aircraft, you can climb it about 1,500 to 2,000 feet per minute. You can get high very fast. <laughs> you know what I mean. 
So let's climb out at about 80 knots, which would be our best angle of climb. Take the flaps out there. So we're higher than we were on that last attempt. You can see we're coming up through 400 feet now. 500 feet, say we're doing a regular circuit. So say we are now turning in the circuit. We'll be climbing up to 1,000 feet. We know the airport is off to our left now. Just checking the airport. There it is behind us. Oh, engine's gone. All right, so AV8, first of all, 88 knots. Let's make sure we get 88 knots and we'll try and trim for that and get the nose down a little bit more. We can go through some very quick checks. Is anything happening? Try and put the mixture through it for full control. Fuel pump on, that doesn't do anything. Throttle through its full range, that doesn't do anything either. So navigate, now we're gonna look for a place to land. Do we think we can make the airport from here? I don't. I really don't think we can, but let's try it. So I want to turn, but not too sharp. You can see we're building up a bit of speed so I can lift the nose, try and pull it back. At this point, because we have a tiny bit of time, we're at 500 feet, we can do the communicate bit. So first thing I'll do is I'll tell my passengers or anyone on board what they should be doing, strapping in, uh, making sure that they are aware that there's, we've got a real emergency here. I very quickly try and get on the radio to air traffic control and let them know what I'm trying to do. If this was me for real, I'd actually go off to the right here now. I'd try and go into that area because I don't think we're going to make it over these buildings, to be honest. You can see, look at my airspeed there. It's already coming down. I have to put the nose down. I'm not going to make it over these buildings. So even at that height, that far from the airport, you can see we're coming into the trees here. And in the sim, it will be fine. We'll bounce off the roof. But in real life, that wouldn't have been pretty. Now, when you're doing this sort of simulator training, it's always a little bit, if you've ever done this in a sim or with your instructor, you kind of know it's coming. It's not like the engine's going to fail. It's like, when is it going to fail? So you're kind of going through it in your head beforehand. Let's get a little bit comfier in the aircraft and I'll start doing some circuits. So between three and six minutes, I'm not sure now when this engine failure is going to happen. Is it on takeoff? Is it on final approach? Is it at circuit height? Who knows? 50, 60, all right, just a regular flight, a regular circuit. I'll get to 500 feet, make a left-hand turn. I'm going to distract myself as well by talking to you about something else that's been troubling me recently, which is, did you realize that of all the people watching this video, over 70% of you are not subscribed to this channel, which I'm trying to get to a little bit of a, a personal milestone of mine, which hopefully we're going to hit in the next couple of months. If you are watching this and you do like your aviation content, please allow me to encourage you to click on that subscribe button. Seriously, it does help me a lot to see the channel grow, it means a lot to me as well. So look, if you enjoy these videos and you're into your aviation as well, please click on subscribe if you're one of the 70%. If you are a subscriber and you've been subscribed for a while, look, I really appreciate everyone who's been with me since the beginning. So yeah, to all you guys, thank you very much. All right, well, we're coming up to about a thousand feet. There's the airport to the left of me. Let's level us off here. Bring the power back. Looking for, there's about 45 degrees to the runway. Let's go one stage of flap. And we'll slowly start our descent, start our base turn. Of course, we'll be doing all of our radio calls and everything like that. I'm a little bit fast. So I'm just gonna bring the nose back a little bit just to get this to about 90 knots. There we go. See, I've got the heading bug pinned on the runway heading as well. That really helps me, especially in the flight sim to know that should mean the runway is basically off there, pretty much to our left. Turning to final with our next stage of flaps. Looking for around 80 knots here. Just drop the nose a little bit. 500, 500 feet. All right, so far so good. 80 knots, looking pretty good on the runway. Actually not looking too good, I'm pretty flat. Very flat, in fact. Oh, an engine failure here. Well, so all we, we're actually configured. <laughs> it's kind of the perfect time for it to happen. Oh, that couldn't have worked out any better, actually. It's, well, it kind of sucks for the video because it's not quite as dramatic as I wanted. We'll do it again. 60 knots. Airspeed's good on both, 70 knots. All right, through 90 knots. First stage of flaps goes away. Let's get an outside view just so you can have a bit of a different view. There we go. Around 100 knots on the climb out. I generally climb out at about 110. That's a good cruise climb. But because we're in the circuit here and we want to be sticking close to the airfield, I'm uh, just going to trade a bit of speed for altitude. All right, that's better. We're up at altitude, so we can come back on the power. Pretty high, actually, on this one. Check our spacing to the airport. And then in the Cirrus, I'm generally looking at about 20% power at this point down downwind. 100 knots is pretty good. Oh, that's not, that's a bit of a sloppy circuit. Actually, I really, I can feel that I'm a little bit out of practice having not flown for a little while, even in the sim. Yeah, see, I'm actually quite a way away from the airport now, so I'm going to start my turn downwind here. Turning to downwind, ah, now engine problem. So I've got no engine. First thing I need to do is AV8. So let's get 88 knots. There we go. So trim for 88 knots. Navigate, I'm gonna 
angle myself towards the airport immediately, get away from this populated area, very quick troubleshooting, checking the mixture, checking the throttle, don't want to be diving down, fuel pump. So nothing's really happening here, so aviate, navigate, I'm making my way towards the airport. I can see that directly ahead of me. I'm going to give a quick passenger briefing, let them know what's happening, if I can get on the radio, which I would do because this is a Class D airport, there'll be other aircraft. Just a mayday, 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 echo Yankee Zulu, echo Yankee Zulu, engine failure turning back towards the airfield. I haven't got any flaps out at the moment because I'm not confident I'm going to make it and I don't want to make this turn too sharp, but here we go. I should be able to get over the trees here and line myself up with the runway. Again, not too sharp. There we go, lined up with the runway. Don't want to balloon it. Oh, this is quite tricky coming in and getting the speed off. Here we go, touch it down. And bring it to a halt on the runway. And I'm pretty confident the only reason why I made that back to the runway was I recognized that I was drifting away from the airport on that downwind leg. I was too far away from the airport, so I actually brought myself in. And then when I had that engine failure, I just, just, just made it back to the airport. That was fun. Another test. Let's not make it so easy on ourselves, though. Let's go back to what it would be like. That's good. That's, that's exactly what it looks like outside. We've just got a cold front passing through us at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to climb out straight ahead passing through 90 knots we'll get rid of the first stage of flaps i'm just looking at my artificial horizon looking at my altitude looking at my airspeed just trying to climb there i'm going to lower the nose just a tiny bit i've already got rid of my flaps if we look outside can't really see very much so here i am making my merry way to sydney as i usually would flying out of moravin i actually i'm heading south at the moment here i am making my way to hobart as i often would flying out of moravin it's been a long time Really cannot see anything below, around us. Oh, air traffic control is trying to get hold of me in this sim. I don't want... Ignore air traffic control. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> just, as we, just as we crack out of the clouds at the top, we've got an engine failure. Now, we've got altitude. Look, we've got 3,000 feet. We've got a lot of time to make some decisions here. So the first thing I can do is I'm faster than my 88 knots, my glide speed. So I'm going to try and gain a little bit more altitude. Let's do a couple of quick travel checks. Does the mixture help? No. Fuel pump on, does that give us anything? No, that doesn't. Still watching my speed all the time. Don't get obsessed with what's going on down here. Change the fuel tank, does that help? No, working my way up the console, is there anything else that I can notice? It's not an electrical issue. I've lost engine power. Nothing I do down here is helping me fix it. Whatever other troubleshooting checks you would do in your aircraft, do them. Don't just go by what I did there. Anyway, we can't start the engine. We're a glider now. So the second thing I would do then is navigate. I can't see the ground below me, so I'm not sure what I'm looking for. I know that I've got populated areas to my left and I've got ocean to my right and I've got the coastline down here. So what I would, oh, see how I'm, I'm wandering off as well? See how I'm wandering off to the, to the left there? That's just me not looking at my primary instruments and getting into a bit of bother there. So let's get the airspeed back to 88 and let's start flying us down the coast. So now, I'm navigating, I'm trying to find hopefully somewhere down the coast. I can actually start to see the ground coming in, which is great, but I know if all else fails, I'm going to turn right and I'm going to put the aircraft in the ocean. I don't want to try a forced landing over a populated area where I'm not confident I've got an open space of ground. And then communicate. I tell the passengers what's happening. I'd make sure they buckle up, put away any loose items, brief them on exiting the aircraft, getting out of the aircraft. And then I would jump on the radio and say something like, Mayday, 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 Echo Yankee Zulu, Echo Yankee Zulu, Echo Yankee Zulu, engine failure. We are approximately one mile south, what are we, south? east of Moravian Sierra Foxtrot. That's the waypoint I have here. On descent, we are gonna be doing a forced landing along the coastline. We are two POB, one pilot, one cow. And see, even whilst I'm doing that, I'm focusing on, you know, trying to tell you about what I'm doing, but also focusing on my radio call. I'm just wavering off my speeds. Always fly the plane, fly the plane. That's your number one priority. If you can only do one thing, fly the aircraft. Now I'm getting out of the clouds a little bit. I can start to look around and see, is there any other, this field here looks quite nice actually. Should we try for that? Would you try for that? I think we will. 500 feet to the ground. I'm gonna get one stage of flaps out. This should be looking all right. I'm gonna get now my second stage of flaps. The moment I'm confident I'm gonna make it, I punch in that second stage of flaps and I really try and slow us down. Brush the top of the trees. As slow as you can. 
Stall. 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 And slow us down on the ground. My heart's going. Now I've had a little bit of a go at Microsoft Flight Simulator in the past saying it's a bit more of a game than a flight simulator, but because of the realism visually of what you see on the ground, if you want to practice things like engine failures and decision making like that, like should I go right to the beach or left to this field, it's actually, I reckon it's a really good way to practice. Hopefully next up on the channel, I'll be reviewing the new Garmin D2 Air Pilot Watch. It's brand new, only just come out and they're sending me one to have a look at. So thank you Garmin, but it's somewhere in Europe right now. It's stuck in the post, but that's coming to the channel soon. Please click on that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll flight simulator.